What up everybody? Time to do another knife review. Today we're going to be talking about the Boker Plus Salmonero Designed Stingray Folder. Alright, now this is a Boker Plus product. It is one of their Asian imports. Uh, it is designed by custom maker Sal Monero. Uh, Sal has been in the game for a little while. He's very well known, uh, very highly respected, and uh, people just love his design language in his knives. Uh, and of course, he's all over the internet on Instagram, Facebook. You can find photos of his work everywhere. Now, this is a Boker Plus product, and it did come in the standard Boker Plus packaging, the magnetic flap uh, box, which I think is a nice added touch for these at their price point. Uh, you've got your standard uh, Boker Plus uh, warranty information. It did come with an extra uh, pocket clip screw, and then you can see that the insert, the foam and velour insert, is die cut for the specific knife. Uh, so not generic packaging really uh, let's see here you can see there is your information the 01BO147 made in China all right we'll get that to the side let's go ahead and pull this knife right back in here we'll go over the specs first of all uh, now this is a long slender knife uh, it's got a four and one eighth inch long blade. That's ten and a half centimeters. The blade stock thickness is 157 thousandths of an inch or four millimeters. The blade width at the widest was 1.05 inches or 26.88 millimeters. The handle length five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. The handle thickness is 478 thousandths of an inch so slightly less than a half an inch or 12.14 millimeters the handle width is 1.06 inches or 27 millimeters the closed width i measured at the widest here on the uh, thumb disc to the back of the handle is a very narrow um, 1.21 inches the closed width or 30.84 millimeters. The overall length, nine and five eighths inches or 24.5 centimeters. And the weight is a pretty reasonable 5.61 ounces or 159 grams. Now, uh, I typically I don't do a lot of comparisons in my videos, but I'm going to this time just to sort of give you an idea of the overall size of this knife. It is a very long knife. Uh, over five and a half inch handle length and over four inch blade length for nine and a half inches overall. So we'll bring out a standard here, and that is the paramilitary two. All right, you can see right off the bat this is quite a bit longer than the paramilitary two, and it's quite a bit narrower than the paramilitary two. So for its length, it's going to carry fairly, fairly narrow in your pocket. All right. Now, a couple of other comparisons uh, just to show you that, you know, this is sort of a size that I really like. I like this four inch blade length in a folder and where I live, it's legal to carry. So I have a few different things in my collection. And of course, one, I just did the video on this knife, and that is the Zero Tolerance 0452CF and I have an upcoming video on this knife and that is the Protec Godfather and you can see that these knives are pretty much exactly the same length overall right at same handle lengths and blade lengths uh, very very good comparisons overall very good comparison as far as a long slim profile all right let's get these out of the way because the video is not about that protec and it's not about this zero tolerance it's about this boker plus stingray all right now let's go ahead and do materials uh, there's two versions of this stingray uh, now the version i have the blade steel is 440c there is another version that is in vg10 and uh, you know what? Those two steels, to me, 
are very, very close. I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think I should have researched this, but I believe VG-10 is a cobalt alloyed steel. And the cobalt in it would act as a carbide former, uh, and it would affect slightly machinability and finishability. So I think people sometimes look at VG-10 as a slightly superior steel. Uh, but from my experience, and I've had experience using both steels, they perform pretty much uh, very close to each other, depending on the quality of the heat treat. But my version is in 440C, uh, which is, you know, a standard steel for Boker across, you know, a vast majority of their product lines. And then the handle material is titanium. Uh, it is full titanium slabs. They are not weight relieved on the inside, and it is a frame lock. All right. Um, we'll go into fit and finish here because there's a lot to talk about as far as a fit and finish on this knife goes. This is one of the very few knives that I've ever seen in the sub $100 price point that has a hand rubbed satin blade finish. It is beautiful. It is very well done. It is even across all surfaces of this blade, both sides. There is just something um, about a hand rub satin finish. Uh, it's a very, very labor intensive finish. And uh, I've done this finish on steel myself. It is very labor intensive and you have to be very critical with this. So to see it in a sub $100 uh, production knife, an import knife, is something very special. All right, uh, you can see that uh, the Boker Plus symbol here, their marking is very well etched. And then on the back, you have Mr. Monero's marking and the 440C uh, notation for the steel. And I believe down, right down here, and of course I've got that upside down, we have a serial number. This is number 595. All right. Uh, the handle slabs, like I say, are titanium. Um, it does, since they're not milled, it does give this knife a, just a little bit of weight at 5.61 ounces. Uh, that is not excessive. You are not going to pick this knife up and think that the weight is excessive. Actually, you're probably going to pick it up and go, wow, that seems sort of light for the size. Uh, especially considering most people would never carry this large of a folding knife anyway. A lot of states, it's not even legal to carry it in. The, uh, the handle finish is a dual radius a uh, cross hatch sort of checkering and you can see that the focal the centering point of this is right here and then it you've got one radius going this way you've got another radius going this way and then they cross hatch across the handle scale it is a very interesting pattern that is one of Sal Monero's patterns uh, in fact, his custom Stingray, the versions that I've seen, are pretty much in a similar pattern than the, this one is in. So that carried over from his custom. It is very well machined. Uh, I don't have any issues with the way it's machined. Uh, the edge is relieved. Uh, the whole edge is radiused into a flat on the sides uh, on the handle scales. So the whole thing is, is pretty doggone comfortable. You've got this uh, crosshatch checkering uh, for traction, and it does work very well for, for traction. Um, but you have the radius edges for comfort. Uh, that is a very, very good feeling knife. No issues. There is very well done. All right. Uh, you also, you have a small sort of a swoopy, uh, stylized teardrop type um, stamp steel pocket clip. It is a fold over, uh, deep carry. It is set into a radius pocket and it is a two screw uh, attachment. It is for right hand tip up only as you can see here. 
Um, so lefties, you've just been left out of this one also. Uh, I love this pocket clip. Uh, I, as I've said in the uh, zero tolerance, the 0452 CF video, I love these smaller pocket clips, especially when they're done as a fold over, a deep carry uh, pocket clip. All right. I will go back to the blade. Uh, you can see that it does not use thumb studs. This is, of course, is not a flipper knife. It uses a thumb disc set into the top, and it does have some checkering on it around the edge and on the top. You do have a set of uh, jimping on the base of the blade here, and it is very good jimping. Uh, this is very good jimping. Let me see this pattern right here. It is evenly and well cut. It is fine. It is sharp enough to grab your skin, but not sharp enough to be uncomfortable or to cause uh, a bad hot spot. All right, let's uh, close this thing down here. You've got a very substantial stop pin on this, and it is inset. Uh, it is not screwed in. It's just captured. Uh, between the two handle scales, but it is very substantial. Uh, you'd also have a uh, a short um, backspacer at the butt end. It is held in by three screws, and it also is checkered. And you can see that here, let me see if we can see, that the checkering is proud of the handle scales. Uh, so you do get the full benefit of it. It is very well done also carries around the butt here slightly <clears throat> all right excuse me uh, you do the tip is fairly close to the uh, surface here of the handle but there's really no issues in catching that I can catch it but I have to really really push some skin down in there I don't think you're going to do that naturally and have any type of problem uh, you can see the centering on mine is pretty much perfect uh, for my example. And uh, we'll look at the lockup here. The lockup is fairly early. That's probably about 30%, 30 or 35%. There is a slight amount of lock stick on this. Um, it does not, the lock bar does not have a hardened steel insert. Um, not a huge deal, but also the lock face, I do not believe it is carbonized either. Um, it does not have the feel of being carbonized, and it does have some lock stick. So keep that in mind. The action on mine. Um, there were some issues in this knife, and we'll start out talking about the action. This knife had such a stout detent, you could barely open the knife. Uh, it had an incredibly stout detent. So uh, I disassembled the knife and I peened that detent ball. I seated it just a little bit uh, to lighten that detent up just a little bit. So it is pretty much perfect now and the blade just flies out. It's got a good detent, a uh, good lockup. There's no lock rock or anything. Uh, the lockup is very solid. Like I say, it does have a little bit of lock stick. It is not bad. Uh, it breaks away very easily. Now, a second point that I had to work on on this knife was the thumb disc itself. The finishing on the thumb disc was very, very sharp on the edge, and I don't know if you can see this. What I had to do is on the bottom side of the thumb disc, I came with a set of diamond files, and I just chamfered that around the edge. It's just a bare little chamfer, and basically what it was is... Uh, when they did the knurling on the sides, it left sort of a, uh, a burr, much like sharpening your edge on a knife. It left a burr there that was very sharp and uncomfortable. So I just knocked that burr off, barely chamfered that. Uh, I did the same to the top. You can see it actually, you know, as I was very gentle with it, it actually looks like it was just chamfered from the factory. 
All right, so um, <clears throat> I did have to work on the detent just a little bit, not a big issue. Um, I did have to do a little touch-up work on that thumb disc. Again, not a big issue. Uh, you're getting a lot of knife here at the sub $100 price point. A lot of titanium, uh, a big long slab of 440C or VG10, depending on which version you get, that hand rub finish. That's a whole lot of knife. Uh, at that price point. So I was not surprised there was some little niggly fit and finish issues. There wasn't anything too awful major, nothing that um, anybody that is, you know, comfortable with even disassembling a knife uh, couldn't take care of. All right. Uh, one more issue with this knife. And that is the edge, the way the edge was done. There is no sharpening choil on this knife. The plunge is a soft uh, plunge. It is not a sharp plunge. So that plunge just sort of rolls from the blade thickness into the grind. And rather than putting a sharpening choil here, they sharpen this knife all the way up into the plunge it would have been it would have been better to have put a sharpening choil on this knife and considering the way that the blade is shaped you could have come in here and it looks like you know three sixteenths of an inch wide you would have had to have gone with a sharpening choil to get up away from that plunge grind and uh, you know, that would have made it a lot easier to resharpen. Now on mine, <clears throat> the edge is even. It came very sharp. The tip was very sharp from the factory. So actually, as far as the edge, where the way it was sharpened, there was no issues there. Um, this is a knife that, you know, it's still very sharp from the factory, but I think I'll go ahead and put this on the KME and see what I can do with it. And in fact, I'm probably gonna disassemble this knife and uh, I'm going to see if there's anything I can do. There may not be anything I can do as far as adding a sharpening choil. If you can see in there, you see immediately behind the edge there is a radius. And that is actually the contact point for the, to contact the stop pin in the closed position. Yeah, see? Um, I may not be able to do anything about that. I probably will not be able to do anything about that. I'll just have to look at it uh, and do some fittings with it and see. But that's, you know, that's part of the design aspect of this knife. Sometimes a designer, a maker, Salmonero in this instance, will design a knife and there will be certain aspects of it that are um sort of uh it's done for the looks of it you know he wanted in this design obviously he wanted to carry this edge all the way back to the handle scale okay that design aesthetic would not be, have been the same if he would have changed this design to include a sharpening choil here where you sort of simulate that with my fingernail and it would have looked different. It would have left the gap of that sharpening choil between the blade edge and the handle scale. And he may not have wanted that. He may have wanted, in his, in his mind, the design aesthetic that he was going for required this edge to go all the way back to the handle scale. So not that's not a fault really it is just you know it's there's a give and a take between uh utilitarian design and design aesthetic in all knives uh, there's very few knives out there that you would consider to be quote unquote perfect in the balance of that uh, it's really it's nearly impossible to balance those two things um because the style of a knife is so important before you ever pick that knife up before you ever feel it in your hand before you ever cut with it you see the style of it it is much like going to a restaurant 
your first interaction with the food you are served is when they set it down on the table and you see it. And that is why it's important in a restaurant to properly plate food, to make it attractive because you see it before you taste it. All right. Now, as far as the design itself goes, uh, you've got a five and a half inch handle length here. Plenty of real estate for any size hands. Uh, long enough for large and extra large hands, but it's narrow enough and thin enough to be comfortable for those with smaller hands. You have what I love here, a very, very deep finger choil. I love a finger choil in a knife. I love it. Um, once you get into that finger choil, you are not going to slide up or back on that blade. And you've got plenty of blade length here uh, for just about any type of grip. Uh, in a reverse grip like this, your pinky is falling into that finger choil. So again, you've got usefulness out of that finger choil. And your thumb is falling on this um, checkered backspacer. So um, <clears throat> I like this knife in the forward and reverse grips, and that's the two primary grips I use. And since this knife was designed as a defensive knife, that's, you know, always been understood with this design. Uh, I'm not worried about draw cutting and, you know, uh, pinch cutting and getting out, you know, to the tip, like I'm gonna use this knife to skin game. I'm not worried about any of that with this knife. It was never designed for those types of use. Even though in a pinch, it could do all those things just like most knives could. The blade design is a clip point. Uh, it is almost a trailing point design. Uh, if you take a look at it overall, the only reason I would not call it a trailing point is that the point still finishes fairly low linearly uh, in the design, it does not rise up really above the center line of the design. But you do have this extended clip. It is clipped almost the entire length of the blade. And you do have a good long length of flat here. And then a beautifully designed belly rising up to a very sharp point. Now, we'll take a look at that point. Uh, it is very sharp. The grind intersections as far as the primary grind, the edge grind, and the swedge grind uh, are pretty good from side to side. All right, there is a little bit of difference because I think the primary grinds on this one are just slightly off and that's causing the edge grind to be slightly different on each side. Uh, when I put this on the KME, we'll see exactly how that equals out. Uh, but it is a very stabby, uh, very slashy, very long, very capable blade design uh, as fits into its overall design uh, intentions of being a self-defense uh, martial use uh, blade. Uh, you're very secure on the handle between the texture and between the finger choil, plenty of real estate, plenty of reach on the blade. A very aggressive blade design with a thin edge thanks to a, uh, you know, a high, this is a hollow grind, but it is a shallow hollow grind. It does give you a thin edge, um, you know, and very pointy tip. And then you've got this long, uh, fairly narrow swedge. So overall, uh, I think the knife is very well suited for its intended design parameters as a defensive knife. Uh, it's very secure in the hand. It gives you plenty of reach. Uh, the quality overall is very high. The things that I've pointed out as far as quality issues uh, are slight fit and finish issues as far as the disc goes. Uh, the detent was a slightly uh, more of an issue that maybe some people will not want to get into, but was not an issue for me. Uh, now the action, of course, is just butter smooth. Uh, it is on washers, it is not on bearings, but um, that's hard to do in front of a camera. I'm sorry, guys, but it is pretty smooth. All right, guys. Well, the Boker Plus Salmonero Design Stingray 
it's long it'll reach out and touch somebody and uh, the quality is pretty good for its price point I'm gonna recommend this one guys uh, with the caveat of if you can try it in hand to check out the detent on it uh, do that if you are mail ordering uh, be prepared for that um, not a big issue and you can fix it yourself you can just look that up on the internet how to uh, lighten that detent a little bit uh, but overall I'm going to recommend this it is a fabulous fabulous design by Sal Monero uh, great execution from Boker Plus uh, especially considering the price point uh, that beautiful hand rub satin finish on that blade um, the wonderful texturing on the handle and just a, a great overall design. All right, guys. Once again, I appreciate you taking the time to view my videos. Um, please take the time to comment, uh, yay or nay, on any of these knives. Uh, anything that you'd like to say about them, I'm always very open-minded and willing to discuss any of these knives with anybody. Um, if you have any questions, maybe on sharpening, or care maintenance on these knives. Uh, while I don't know everything, I do have a tendency to get into them myself rather than have somebody else do it. So uh, I do have a little bit of experience with that. Uh, bring your friends around. Uh, I'm looking for subs. I'm getting ready to do a contest, my first contest, and it's going to be basically a uh, available only to subs. It's going to be a sub drive contest. So uh, be ready for that here in the next week or so. I've been putting together the prizes. We're going to have multiple prizes, and uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So thank you guys for taking the time to watch. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you later.